They appear almost as soon as the ice melts off the vernal ponds. Wood frogs, scientifically known as lithobates or lithobates, a genus of frogs comprised of various species found all about woodlands, glades, meadows, and breaks of North America. They range widely all the way from the Appalachians down south and east up to the Alaskan wilderness in the far north and west of the continent. Any place they have access to damp forests or moist wetlands, they can make their home. Avid and eager hunters, they will make meals of insects and any other small creatures that they find. They are adaptive and versatile, and they have an amazing survival ability, one that blew the collective minds of scientists only a few decades ago. But we'll come back to that. I recall when I first came across them deep in the Alaskan interior, and reported the sighting to a biologist at the Department of Natural Resources, a tiny village of the Alaskan Southeast Mainland. And the biologist telling me, nope, they don't dwell that far in the interior. And me telling them, well, I walked right by them and their eggs and their tadpoles along the trail this morning as I was on my way into the village. Looking at current maps showing their dispersion, it seems it's finally become accepted that they are also in the Alaskan interior. Not that myself or any other bush people at the time needed the biologist to confirm that to us. We already knew. They were there. We saw them. But these incredible little creatures are found around such a wide range of habitats because of an amazing ability. During the winter, they can freeze and go into a state of suspended animation, allowing them to survive some of the coldest habitats on Earth. And when spring comes, as soon as the land is warmed and they thaw, they come back to life. This fascinating ability is what blew so many scientists' minds. As we approach winter, wood frogs fill their bodies with glucose, which helps them to resist freezing. Then, typically, they will bury themselves somewhere within a few inches of forest duff. And there, they will allow themselves to pretty much freeze solid. The glucose with which they pack their cells allows the water in their cells to resist crystallization as it freezes with the winter cold. And at the same time as they are packing their cells with glucose, they are also amping up reproductive hormones within their bodies. This means that they go into suspended animation, eager to mate. And as soon as they wake up from their long frozen winter slumber, sex, to be frank, is exactly the first thing on their minds. And when the spring thaw comes, they exit their little hibernation lairs and promptly head down to the nearest vernal pond. I should add here that they tend to choose to hibernate near vernal ponds too. They make sure that when they come back to life, they are someplace close to where they can mate. Male and female, the wood frogs descend to the vernal pond, and there the males begin their chorus. You can hear it now, the duck-like clucking going on all around us. Meanwhile, the males float atop the water, keeping a keen eye out for signs of any females. The females are drawn to the pond by the chorus and enter the water, often staying along its edges. They are considerably bigger than the males. They have to be. Their bodies are filled with up to a thousand tadpole eggs, which they will lay in clusters attached to grasses and detritus in the ponds. Here you can see masses of tens of thousands of eggs, right at the edge of this vernal pond, or attached to grasses deeper in, within about 15 centimeters of the surface of the water. Vernal ponds are seasonal ponds, they are only around part of the year and dry the rest of the time. Wood frogs require such ponds because they don't have much in the way of fish. Fish that would eat their eggs and tadpoles. When the wood frogs descend to the vernal pond, the males will float around the surface watching for any sign of an approaching female. The males can be pushy and aggressive maters, and the females will often linger at the bottom of the pond to avoid mating until they are ready. When a male and a female come together, the male will approach the female from behind and wrap its arms around her. The male maintains this grip, called amplexus, until the female lays her eggs. As the eggs exit the female, the male releases semen, and thus the eggs are fertilized outside the body. There are similarities here to the way many fish fertilize their eggs. Here, we can see a male and a female coming together in amplexus. You can also see the water underneath the pair virtually roiling. There are many females beneath the surface, hiding out from over-eager males. And if you look carefully, you can see the vast mass of frog eggs beneath the pair. Let's take a closer look. Just centimeters below the surface, attached to various macrophytes and perhaps twigs that have fallen into the water, is an uncountable mass of wood frog eggs. And all around the egg mass, we see wavelets of swimming females hiding below the surface until they are ready to meet the males. Indeed, there can be a certain degree of violence in wood frog mating, 
The males can be so pushy and eager to mate that they might gather in bundles around a female, each trying to squeeze her and fertilize the exiting eggs. The force of this can become so intense that it literally tears the females apart. If you are ever near a vernal pond and see what appears to be a floating lump of flesh, entrails, and perhaps a little cloud of blood nearby, that was a place where females had come to the male's mating death ball. Sometimes the males in their mindless eagerness might drown a female, and they are known to even clasp other creatures such as salamanders and other species of frogs in amplexus. After the brief two-week season of mating, the vernal ponds will grow quiet, and now it is a race against time. Vernal ponds will eventually dry before the summer ends, giving the tadpoles only weeks to hatch and develop into air-breathing frogs so that they can exit the pond and continue their own lives before the water is dried up. Here are juvenile tadpoles just now leaving their eggs. With any luck, many of these will make it to adulthood, like this one I found in the nearby Acadian deciduous forest, where in the cool moist environment it can eat its fill of insects and anticipate joining in next year's mating chorus. Thank you for coming along on this voyage of discovery into the understory. The purpose of the Understory channel is to tell the tales of the lives and the science that shape the natural world. If you appreciate the work of the channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. And feel free to hop on over to Facebook and join the Understory group, where you can find links to fascinating articles and take part in discussions relevant to natural science. And finally, thanks to the many contributors who make this channel possible.